So hey guys, uh, welcome to this new video on data structures and algorithms. And in this video, I'll be talking about um, dividing conquer algorithm. So we'll be, uh, the applications of dividing conquer algorithms are finding max mean. Like uh, these are the examples we're going to find or going to work on. So we'll be finding max mean, power of an element, binary search, quick sort, mud sort, uh, selection procedure, and continuous maximum sub array sum. So let's go to uh, finding max mean first. Finding max mean so of an array so what will be the input of this uh, input will be an array of n elements output will be max and mean of those n elements max and mean element among those n elements for example i have an array a which is 80 20 50 90 11 68 99 and these are the indexes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and the output will be max here is 99 min here is 11 so uh, this is the input this is the input sample input and this is the sample output so how you can like go go around this problem and solve this so we can solve this iteratively and we can use uh, DAC so we will first use the iterative uh, procedure so in iterative what we will do we will take a max counter and a min counter which will be a of 1 a of 1 then what I will do I will iterate for and i is equal to 0 i is less than is less than a dot length i plus plus so here what i did i ran a loop from 0 to sorry 1 to a dot length so if a of i sorry if a of i is greater than max then i will update the value of max so max will be a of i else if a of i is less than minimum i will update the value of the minimum which is minimum will be a of i and at the end like this is the for this sorry this is for this this is for this and this is for this so at the end i will return maximum like this is a pseudo code so don't get like uh, don't think about the syntax so here what i did i did this iterative so I, this here i ran a loop and here i did the comparisons this is the first comparison i did and this is the second comparison so this is how you find max and min iteratively so let's see how many comparisons we did so if the like say if the like uh, like if this array is in ascending order like one two three four five So what I did here is ascending order. So if it is ascending order, the comparison will be let's say a of i max is uh, so at first what we did max and min set. So max I have set to one and min I have set to one. So the first time this loop will start i is equal to one. So i is one. So if a of i is greater than max, so sorry I will start the loop from one. Yeah, it is okay. I will start the loop from two. So this is one, two, three, four, five. These are the array elements, and this is the index. So I will start the loop from 2. So I have 2 is 2. 2 is greater than max. Yes. So max is equal to 2. A of 1. So max is updated to 2. Then a of i, a of 1, sorry, a of 2 is uh, 2. So 2 is less than min. No. So there is no operation here. So uh, and again, i is i will become 3. So 3 is like uh, it is 2. And uh, 3, a of i is 3. 3 is greater than 2. So yes, 3 is greater than 2. So max will be updated to 3. But uh, is 3 less than 1? No. So it is not updated. updated. So in this case, the number of comparison is like same but this updation will be only once so n minus one time so the number of comparisons will be big o of n minus one sorry the comparisons and also this setting the value of this thing so it will be big o of n minus one so i have written this a bit confusing uh, this will be else just a minute
So uh, this is this is the code. If this fails, this this also come. So you can see if this if this is this is going on, like if this is passing every time in case of like increasing order. So I will not go to else. So the number of comparisons will be least. So you can say uh, like this is big of n minus one. But if it is in decreasing order, like three, two, one, sorry, uh, five, four, three, two, one. So it is like it's array and one, two, three, four, five. This is the index. So let's say uh, first i is equals to one and max is five, min is five. So first what? Uh, first I will come i of, a of i, which is five. Five is greater than five, no. So else part will go. Next, what I say? Five is less than min. Uh, yeah. So a of i is five. Five is less than min. So no, five is not less than. Sorry, I will start from two now. So min estimate. Yeah, min max will be five, and I will start from two to so four. So four is greater than max, no. So it will come in else part. So four is less than min. Yes. So this will the value will get updated. Next time two. Four, uh, next time sorry. Next time three. So three is greater than five, no. So but three is less than min, so it will be three. So every time we are doing like two comparisons, uh, one for this and one for this. So th in this case, the time complexity will be O of two and minus one. So here we can see uh, we have increased, uh, like one comparison has been increased. So the number of comparisons will be two of n minus one if it is in the decreasing order. So now let's see what will be the time complexity of this. So in time complexity, we talk about loops. So in this case, the loop will run for n times. So the time complexity t of n will be big of n. Uh, actually, it is n minus one times because I started from z2. And so the time, time complexity will be t of uh, n minus one, but it will, uh, we will take the, we will, uh, we will not consider any constraints. So it will be uh, big, uh, big of n. So this is the time complexity. And uh, as we know that in time complexity, we, we will just look, look, look for loops. So I have just, uh, there is one loop in this uh, program. So I have taken the time complexity to be O of n and this will run, runs for n times. So the time complexity will be O of n. So it will, will be the space complexity. The space complexity will be like input plus extra space. Input is like n elements and extra space we have used zero. So it will be big O of n because there is no recursive call here. So the extra space will be zero and the input is n. So the space complexity is zero. The formula of space complexity is space complexity is input plus extra space and input is n and we don't need any extra space because there is no recursive call. So big O of n will be the space complexity. So this was the uh, time complexity and space complexity uh, of the <coughs> like uh, uh, finding max min using uh, for loop so now we will do with DAC so for DAC I have an input an array of n elements and output my max min find the max min of that array and I have this example array so the output will be max is equal to 90 which is the highest which is the maximum in this array and minimum is 3 which is the minimum in this array so so while doing this using the DAC algorithm so we will follow the DAC template which is which looks like this like uh, any uh, divide and conquer algorithm will look like this like DAC a i j it will be if smaller return solution else we will divide So you can see this is the template of DAC algorithm. Here the smaller is where the we will this will be the base condition. And this is like the divide part, this is the conquer part. And this is the combined part. <coughs> so this is the template. So in, in, in this in this in our in our this program, what is smaller? We can say our smaller can be if like we, I have got only one element and it equals to equals to one. Then it can be smaller or n is equal to, equal to two because if n is equal to one, I have only one element, so max will be that element. Or if n is equal to, equal to two, we will compare them. Um, uh, whichever among them is like the highest or maximum will be maximum, and whichever among them will be lower will be lower. So what we can do is DAC max min a i j. So yes, so this will be our DAC max min function. So if what I will do is like let's say this is our array. 
I mean this is an ing so if like I will like I will like divide the, like I will divide like this then I will conquer and then combine and this will be our smaller solution so smaller solution will be what if i is equals to, equals to j that means i is equals to, equals to j so max will be min will be i1 and I will, we will return this max will be i I mean a of i min will be a of j you can write i also return max min this is if i equals to, equals to j one thing can happen is like if i is equals to, equals to j minus 1 uh, if i is equals to, equals to j minus 1 so if like i is equals to, equals to j minus 1 we can check if if a of i is less than a of j then we can make max is equals to a of j min will be equals to a of i else what we can do max is equals to a of i min is equals to a of j so this whole thing becomes our smaller pro uh, problem let me take another pencil yeah so this one is our this one is our smaller problem so what we did here is like if a of i i've got only two elements five and six let's say after dividing and i got i came here this i this and this is j so what i did here is is let's say it is one and it is two so this condition gets two i is equals to one and j is equals to i minus one so i've got only two elements so you have i is equals to five and a of j is equals to two so and so a of i is equals to five and a of j is equals to six so a of j is a of i is less than six uh, sorry yeah, yeah five is less than six so i will increment the five and this mean will be a of five i mean will be five so this goes in this got incremented i will return it from here i missed the return statement max min now comes the divide and conquer part so and divide and conquer part let's see the first see the how, how, how will we do the function let's say i have a i j this is max this is mean so what i will do this is i have divided this uh, array into two parts so what will be uh, i plus j divided by 2 so it will be if it took the uh, if i took the uh, if i take this example if i take this example here So uh, here i is 1, j is 7. So I will divide this array into two parts. So it will be uh, uh, 7 plus 1, 8 by 2, 4. So a of, sorry, this will be dec maximum. So it will be a, a, 1 to 4. And this will be a, 5 to 7. So this is the first function call. This is the second function call. This is the third function call. This is four plus one five by two is two. So a. 1 to 2 max min a 3 4 so here we will stop because we, you can see like we came to the base condition which is this condition and this condition next we will do this one 7 plus 5 is 13 i guess sir. sorry it is 12 so 12 divided by 2 is 6 so it will be a 5 to 6 max min and be a 7 to 7 max i mean so now let's see what will be the a, we, we have the base condition here also and here also so what will the uh, function calls like how will be the function called first this function will be called then this function will be called and then this function will be called this is the function calling order so it will be c1 c2 this is c3 so c1 will be called first then c2 then c3 after c3 completes we will go to c4 
this is this is the C4. After finishing, we will go to C5. C5 will call C6. C6 and this is C7. C7. So this function calling order uh, is pre order. You can see this is called first call, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this. So this is pre order function call R pre order. Now let's uh, compute this what we have got. So one last one two, what is the one two? 80 and 20. So I will compare this. Uh, the max is 80. So max is 80. I'll take another pen. The max is 80 means 20. And 3, 4. This is 3, this is 4. Uh, well, max is 90. And this is 50. And then from this side. Uh, then from this side, you can see I have to compare these four elements. And then this will go up. And from these four elements, what I will get? I will get maximum is 90. And minimum is 20. I will go to this side. Uh, 5 and 6. Uh, between 5 and 6, let's see. Uh, 60 is maximum, 3 is minimum. So 60, 3, and between 7, 7. And because it's the same element, so 85, I guess. 85. And this will go up. And I have to compare these four elements. I will get maximum is 85, minimum is 3. Now I have to compare these four elements. 90, 20, 85, 3. And the maximum will be 90 and 3. This is how the divide and conquer algorithm will flow. So let's see the function order. Execution order will the function execution order. Function execution order will be first you will call this, this will call this, this will call this. This will execute first. C3 will execute first. Then we will get what? So the function execution order will be C3, C4, then we will go to C2. Then we will go to C6, then C7, then C5. Then we will go to, sorry, now this will be C2, C6, C7, C5, and then C1. This will be the function execution order. <coughs> so let's see, let's also see the function stack, how it will be called. So let's say this is my stack. First I have called C1, C1 in turn called C2, C2 in turn called <coughs> C3, C3 finished execution, it called C4, C4 finished execution, C1, C3, C4, C2 here, C2 finished execution, execution then, then C5 is called. This part is called. C5 in turns called. C6. So C6 will finish execution first. So this will be 4. Then C6 will like, uh, yeah, then C6 will call. C6 executes, then C7 will be called. This will be C7. This will finish execution then. Then we will come to this. This will ex finish execution. Then this. So you can see uh, C5, C6. So this follows this order. So this is how it is called. So the stack stack space is like three. You can see one, two, three. I need three uh, three units of stacks. So in a recursive program, this is a very important uh, state statement. In a recursive the space complexity is the amount of stack space taken by the program. Here you can see the stack space 3. So here is the height of the tree, of the recursive tree. You can say the height, of, let me write it. Height of the recursive tree is equal to space taken by the program. This is a very important statement on this one and this one also in regards to the space complexity is the amount of stack space taken and this is the stack space so you here you can write the stack space is 
I had like eight elements. So I have got three, three level three. So why three level three? Because you can see this is the first, second, and third. Here is the, it is in the tree format, and here it is in the stack format. So it will be login. This is the space complexity. Why login? You can see I have like eight elements, and these eight elements created a three level tree. So you can write like login is login will be the space complexity of this program. Now I forgot to say in another thing. This will be log base two n. So why? Because we are dividing this in two parts. If we have done the three part, we have got three in log base of three n. If we have done log, uh, four parts, we would have got like log base four n. So since we are dividing the uh, since we are dividing this into two equal parts, like this part and this part, it, we are getting log base two n as space complexity. So now let's go and like uh, let's complete the program we have written here. Uh, we just have written the where did it go? Yeah, we have just written the base case here. This one is the base. This part, and we have tried the divide and conquer part. So this will be else if, and now else. This will go here, and we write the else part here. This this is where we will be dividing and conquering. So now we will write the else part. Of this program, so what is the else part? This part is like we divide. First, we will divide, which will be i plus j divided by two, then max one min one. Dec max min a i to d. So I have to divide max two min two. Dec max min a divide plus one comma j. We will get the now we will do the combined part max min combine max one min one max two min two. So this 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 four values I am sending for combining. What will be the return of combine? I will get only two elements, which will be max and min. So I will return max min. And this is the end of the program. Let's see what is uh, what I did here. This is the divide part. This is the conquer part, and this is the combine part. The code of the combine part I will write here. For combine, what we did is max one min one, max two min two. If max two is less than min two, max is equals to max two. Else, max is equals to max one. If min one is less than min two, min is equals to min one. Else, min is equals to min two. Return max and min. This is the code of the combine. So here is the total uh, max and minimum finding using divide and conquer. So this part is divide. This part is like conquering using recursive calls, and this part is combi uh, combining. And this part was the base case so this is the uh, like this is the program to find maximum using divide and conquer uh, so next uh, we will see how we, how we can find the time complexity so to find the time complexity of a recursive program and as because that is also a recursive program we can write the recurrence relation for time so for the recurrence relation for time is like we will look for loops so let's say the uh, time taken by the by this uh, where did it go yeah time taken by this algorithm to complete is tn so tn is the total time Taken by DAC maximum algo. So if I write the recurrence relation, it will be O of one because this part will be O of one because this is a smaller problem. And we know in smaller problem, in recursive uh, program is smaller problem, the time complexity is constant because we know the answer and the input is small. So for the small in smaller inputs, the uh, time complexity O of one. So O of one will be n is greater than uh, sorry n is less than equals to two. In other cases, what will be the time complexity? Let's see. So the time complexity of that max min for n elements is t. Uh, for n by two elements will be t of n by two. Let me take another one. So we have seen the DAC for n elements is t of n. So for n by two elements will be t of n by two. For this, it is also will be t of n by two. This is constant. Dividing will take constant time because here is no loop, so it will be one c. We can take c, and this combined time will also be c because uh, this all takes constant time, so it will all be c. So the time complexity we can write as. Uh, C plus T of n by two plus C one and C two when n is greater than two. What is the C one? This is the dividing time. Yeah, 
here it is constant because there is no loop. Uh, I'm talking about this one. This one will be a constant because there is no loop in there. And this is the combining time. This will also be C2 and it, it will not be like it will also be constant because there is no loops in here. So this one will be also constant. So if we solve this uh, reconciliation, what we will get? So if we solve this reconciliation, we will be get. Now if we solve this reconciliation using the substitution method, we will get T of, what is T of? So if I simplify this, it will be T of n is equal to T of n by 2 plus C. So if we solve this, we will get T of n is equal to big O of n. So this is the time complexity of this program, just we just wrote. And so now let's see what will be the space complexity. So the space complexity of recursive program we have discussed is like the uh, number of levels in the recursive tree. Or you can also say the stack space, which is a, uh, which it take. So we just discussed it. We have got three levels in stack and we have also got a three level tree. This is of one, two and three. So you can, and we are also dividing this in two parts. So it will, the space complexity will be, uh, I will write space equals to input plus extra space. Input is n, and extra space will be log of n. And if we, be, we will specify log two of n because we are dividing this into two parts. If we have done it like three, it will be log three percent. So it is n plus log base to n, which will be equal to we go of n. Uh, the input will always be, always be same, uh, same. And for this part, you know, the previously it was o of one because there was not recursive call in this in the iterative program. But here there was there is a like recursive call, so we got the extra space of log base to n. So we, when you are comparing comparing two algorithms, uh, the input will be same for both the algorithms. So we will just compare the extra space. So previously in the iterative program, it was uh, a constant because there was no uh, recursive calls, and here it is log n because I have recursive calls here in this program. So now let's find the uh, number of comparisons in this DAG algorithm. So for this, we will write the reconciliation for comparisons. Previously, we wrote the reconciliation for time uh, here. Now we will write the uh, reconciliation for uh, the comparisons. So let's say the T of n is the total number of comparisons. for DAC min max algo. So if we write T of n equals to how many comparisons are here? Uh, where did I write the code? Yeah. So if I have got only one element, there is no comparison you can see. So it will be zero for n is equals to equals to one. And if n is because n is greater than like n is greater than one, if n is greater than one, you can see I have got only one comparison this. So if n is greater than uh, 1, like n is equal to 2, uh, I will get uh, 1 comparison. So 1 when n is equal to 2. And uh, if uh, this, this two are the base cases, and if I go to the code, where is the code? Yes, this is completed. This part is completed. Now I will go to the divide and conquer. So this part, there is no comparisons. So this, uh, this the, uh, the number of comparisons here is 0. And what is the number of comparisons for this? Uh, as we know that uh, the number of comparisons for n elements is t of n. So what will the number of comparisons for uh, t of n, uh, sorry, for n by two elements? It will be t of n by two. So same thing is there, that, uh, that uh, the number of comparisons for n elements is t n. So for n by two, two elements, it will be n by two. So we can write here is like uh, zero plus t of n by two plus t of n by two. Next comes the comparison part. Sorry, the combined part. Uh, no, it will not be zero, just a minute. Yes, this. Uh, uh, there's no comparison. Yeah, this will be zero for this. For, this is for the divide part. This is for the conquer part. And for the combining part, let's see how many comparisons are there in the combined part. Yeah, so in the combined part, I have this comparison and this comparison. This is in the combined part. These two comparisons are there in the combined part. So if so, we are writing the translation for, com for uh, comparisons. So we will take into account the number of comparisons only. So this will be two for n is greater than 2. So t of n will be equal to, if I simplify this, it will be 2t n by 2 plus 2. Now if we solve this reconciliation uh, using substitution method, we will get what? One, uh, we will get 1.5 n minus 2. So this is the number of comparisons for this tag algorithm uh, which we wrote. And so this, this is the total number of comparisons in our DAC algorithm. So what we did here, we did the reconciliation, uh, we wrote the reconciliation for the comparisons. And the, here we wrote the reconciliation for time. So this is the difference. For, while writing reconciliation from, for time, we are actually interested in the loops, but while uh, loops to find the loops. But uh, in case of uh, comparisons, we are interested in, inter interested in comparisons. So we just wrote the uh, number of comparisons. So we are interested in the comparisons, so we wrote the comparisons part only. So this is the difference in writing the reconciliation between uh, reconciliation for time and comparison. The thing you want for that, you write the reconciliation. So this video will end here. So thanks for watching this video. Thanks a lot.